this is not new. When I saw the video of what happened to George Floyd, once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. It helps people to understand the lived experience of other people in a different way than we've ever experienced it. And I am filled with hope. Show more love instead of hate. I can't really control what they do, but I can help them realize that love is stronger than hate. Welcome to In Case You Missed It, where we feature some of our great work our storytellers have done the week prior. With, we begin it with a look at the younger generation amid these protests. They have a voice in the call for racial equality and justice. Anusha Roy got a look at the protests and the state of the country through their eyes this week. They also told her what they need to actually feel safe. <laughs> The signs these seven-year-old brothers held in front of the Capitol are both simple and powerful. Why are we out here today, guys? As they try to understand a difficult lesson so young. Because somebody got hurt, right, and we want to let people know what? What do we want to let people know? It's not okay? And making sure that there's no bias or hate inside of that conversation. My mom wants me and my brothers to have a better future. The kids out here today may be young, but have seen a lot, like Taylor Thompson, who's originally from Minneapolis. My city just burned down, so it, it kind of hurts. This is something that's not unfamiliar for me. It also means they can help us keep perspective. After all, they're protesting for their future. Stuff like this needs to be on camera too, not just the rights. I think that both should be right. like an equal share on the media because they're both so important. They both have such loud yeah. impacts and voices. When asked what they need to feel safer in their own cities, these young adults know their ask will require patience. It is so complex, but yeah, it's so simple. Like we need people to listen. Very first step would definitely be for the government to at base not even apologize but take responsibility like voice that yes we see police brutality we see it's an issue and we're trying to work on it i don't expect change in a day they're willing to wait and willing to help their community move in the right direction show more love instead of hate i can't really control what they do but i can help them realize that love is stronger than hate anusha roy reporting and when you look at the images from Denver's protests, one thing stands out. Many people in the crowd are white. Some activists say that is a good thing because it's going to take the white population to end systemic injustices. When our crews talked to a few white protesters this week, many said they were there to educate themselves by meeting different people of color and, and di learning about the problems that they are still facing. A leader of the Equity Project told us this week that's, that's made a lot easier because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I do think that this health pandemic, along with the pandemic of racism, all happening simultaneously in a way that is elevated and illuminated, um, really helps people to understand the lived experience of other people in a different way than we've ever experienced it. And I am filled with hope because of that. Now, Dr. Mosby Tyler says a big concern is all the support they have right now during the protest will go away once things stop. She says rather than allies, they need accomplices, people that will fight alongside them long after the marching and the chanting stop. Sometimes in the midst of two massive shifts in society, the pandemic and the protests, it helps to look at the events of the day by looking at the events of just one day. That's what our team of nationally renowned photojournalists did on Thursday. They documented a day in Colorado, sun up to sun down. And our Chris Vanderveen supplied the words to go with their pictures. KOA News Time, 5 o'clock. It's Colorado's morning news on a busy Thursday morning. Days blend. Right now, 59 in Denver. In a wild mixture of chaos and boredom. It's dark out there. How's it going on the roads this early morning, John? Leaving little room. Still pretty light traffic in the metro area. To consider the day that was. We're really doing good. Life comes at you sideways and 100 miles an hour sometimes. We've got a lot of unhealed things coming up to the surface. And it just continues to feel like a reality that we can't escape. You know, everyone's living. Love you. We'll see you later. Week to week seeing how things go. Right on. Okay. 
It all started March 9th when I got the call that we were supposed to leave March 10th for a show in Ohio. Sorry, we have to cancel. What started with a call has yet to end. The arts is huge. I mean, because we're barely employed when things are normal. So, no no I mean, bitterness there. <laughs> Luke and Stephanie yeah. lost gigs. Oh, nothing's happening. Like, oh, your life is stopped. Yeah. This is my son, Jaden Tolson. 18-year-old Jaden. He lost the chance to walk on a stage and accept what was his. But after COVID happened and we realized that certain senior opportunities were going to be taken away, I knew that I had to celebrate as much as I could to make up for what he was losing. I love her fully and like she would go to the end of the world to see me happy. OK, well, we're going to head over to get him to work. His memory, we're celebrating his life today. And at a service with no more than 50 allowed inside, Rosemary knows all too well the depths so, yeah, it, of her loss. He'd been in and out of the hospital for the last nine months. Art, her high school sweetheart. He was a great man, always happy, always had a joke, loved his kids and grandkids so deeply. So he'll be sorely missed. And yet on this one day, like any one day. This is Nora Jo Goodwin. Life continues. Her birth has been just a moment of calm and peace and I hope I think a good reminder for us as parents to continue to nurture her to be a good force for for good in the world. From the birth of Joe and Mary Beth's daughter to the birth of an idea from a restless member of the Colorado Symphony. The symphony is not performing obviously right now. Many Coloradans spent the day considering choreographed improvisation. This is Jorge. From Kelsey at the zoo. Never in my wildest dreams that I think I would actually be in the zoo by myself. To Frank and Connie on their patio. Well, we do miss the social interaction, the yeah. meeting with people one on one. And Life continues. Even in the middle of a disease that has festered in this country for far longer than COVID-19. I think the very real reality that this is not new. When I saw the video of what happened to George Floyd, once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. And then the way that it happened, I think just woke the world up of saying, that's not right. Like it's, I can't just sit home. I, I understand that it's dangerous, but I can't just allow this to be the reality that we continue to live through. On a Thursday in June, in a country in constant motion, Quincy asked a field of hundreds to consider nine minutes of silence. A million things can happen in no more than 24 hours, some profound and some, Hello. some that'll stick with us long after come these here. days are over. Come here, come here, can you see her? Come up on the window, come here, come here. Sarah still can't get close to her parents in their assisted living facility. They're well cared for. We really appreciate the people at the facility, but the isolation is really taking its toll. But things are not bad. No, things are fine. Okay. How can I get a haircut? Well, we have to wait. We have to wait for the governor to tell us it's okay for oh. you to get a haircut. Is that right? Yes. Okay. God, Everything's God. good, Dad. Okay, love you. Love you. Okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <sighs> Harder, for some reason, for me with Dad. That he gets so confused. Days blend, mixing and churning emotions many never knew. Sometimes it makes sense. One group suffering is everyone's responsibility. To stop and reflect on one day that was. I don't know what to do. I don't know how we're going to change it, but hopefully we can make some type of changes. The highs, the lows, and everything that exists in between. I feel like this is a huge opportunity. 
and I hope we take it. Chris Vanderveen, Nine News. It is a strange time in the world of sports. For the first time ever, the leaders of Colorado sports teams talk about their game plans all together. School is done, and I'm just like, I'm ready for the next chapter. That graduate already has her future plans to help her community in motion, a purpose that kept her busy. It has never happened before, but with sports in a bit of a holding pattern right now, our Tom Green had a chance to talk with the four major pro sports coaches in Colorado to talk about these strange times. Michael Malone, Vic Fangio, Jared Bednar, and Buddy Black. Well, they talked about the toughest challenges. The Nuggets and Avalanche are in a similar situation. Both of their seasons were cut short. These are unprecedented times. You know, we had gotten through 65 games of our schedule before the season was suspended uh, back on March 12th. Uh, having a good season, uh, a third place in the Western Conference, and excited for things that were to come. And then obviously, uh, you can't plan for a pandemic. You can't plan for coronavirus. And I think probably for Vic, for Jared, and Buddy, the hardest thing for us has been and keeping your players ready, keeping them engaged. You're trying to build momentum finish off the season strong. Things were kind of going uh, pretty well for us, and, and we were excited about uh, our stretch run and, and getting into the playoffs, and then the pause happened. So we're treating it uh, very similar to an off season. It's kind of approaching the same time frame as our players would have off in the, off, in, in the summertime. And I think that uncertainty for the players is, is the toughest part for all of us. Now the Rocky season was delayed after spring training started up. The Broncos are set to start their schedule on time, but the pandemic has limited their offseason training. Both Fangio and Black say they have kept in touch with their players. I've made it a special point to call every player and we've had conversations about the pandemic, where they're at, what's going on. So I've tried to keep in close contact that way and I've chosen that way rather than having a virtual team meeting. I like the one-on-one -on -one contact with the players with a phone call. And 
and Drew's doing fine. I've talked to him several times. Um, he's back in town now. I know he's found a place to work out. I know him and a bunch of players are going to work out as a group at a field nearby. And um, they're all doing good. You know, we have it a little bit better or a lot better than the other three guys here as far as how it affects us. But, you know, the guys overall are doing well and coping. They've all found places to work out. And they've handled this adversity well. But like, like Vic said, and I'm, I'm sure Jared and, and Michael, I mean, we've all been in contact with our players uh, in different modes, whether it's, you know, Zoom calls, whether it's phone calls, texts. Uh, the coaching staff has done a great job of keeping up with the guys. The training staff, our, our strength coaches, all that's been in play. So our, our players are great. If you missed that whole half-hour conversation, you can watch the entire Coaches Challenge special right now on 9news.com. We have celebrated the class of 2020 for their resilience and their ability to adapt quickly. One Denver High School senior not only finished out her semester with remote learning, she also worked on the front lines during this pandemic. My 9 News co-anchor Jennifer Meckles introduced us to a new graduate one step into her future healthcare career. There may be no stage, no march to pomp and circumstance. But a drive through graduation celebration at the Pepsi Center on Thursday marked the milestone for Denver North High School seniors. School is done, and I'm just like, I'm ready for the next chapter. Sam Cabrera is part of the class of 2020, but her sights are set beyond. Well, I just like always seen myself as a person that really wants to help other people, and health care is like a really big impact in that way, especially during this pandemic and our shortage of nurses. So. I'm really interested in becoming RN. Cabrera is already a CNA, Certified Nurses Assistant. While juggling high school classes and some college classes too, she's also working at a nursing home, Sierra Rehabilitation and Care. A lot of people can't see their family during this pandemic, just making sure like, hey, like let's, let's have a phone call with them. Let's have a video chat with them so that they can still have that connection with their families. Frontline experience during a pandemic is tough for anyone. For this high schooler, it's confirmation she's on the right path. I love seeing my residents and seeing like the impact it had on like making sure that like they had that emotional support with people. I think that's what the big thing that made me like, hey, yeah, I'm still, I'm still ready to do this. Graduation is an important chapter in every student's story. For Sam, it's one step closer to helping others. And especially like, during this time, like, focus on, like, what really matters. Jennifer Meckles, 9 News. Cabrera plans to attend Arapahoe Community College in the fall to start her nursing degree. Healthcare, in case you're wondering, a family tradition. She and her mom both work at the same nursing home and care facility. He's the, the guardian, the protector of the cave, and he's come out from the cave where he's lived for thousands of years to, uh, to visit our guests. That is the friendly face of a troll who wants you to come see him.
Welcome back. When the Glenwood Canyon or Glenwood Caverns Adventure Park reopens tomorrow, there will be a giant new addition. Our man in the mountains, Matt Renew, shows us the giant troll sitting up there, the one you can't miss. At the Glenwood Caverns Adventure Park, owner Steve Beckley do have some uh, new additions and employees are working to get business rolling again. The park is amazingly clean. Everything's painted, ready for, for people to show up. The park's been closed for months and during those quiet days, too quiet, yes, something big and strange has come up from the caves. You know, he came from the cave and been spotted in the park. That's Halvor, he's behind me, and uh, he's the, the guardian, the protector of the cave, and he's come out from the cave where he's lived for thousands of years. He's a giant troll who, after a century underground, has decided life above ground might be more fun. To see people laughing and enjoying themselves. And this is the kind of troll who likes people. So much that if you sit in his lap and smile, he'll even give you a hand with your pictures. And people can sit on his hands and lap and have their picture taken. Halver sits high atop Iron Mountain along a path running through the adventure park, which is the perfect place to relax with the troll. If you want to relax and spend some time with Halvor and take in the mountain scenery and the mountain air and uh, you know distance yourself from other people, this is probably a good place to do it. And while people who are visiting Halvor will have to wear masks, one little known fact, trolls don't need them. And they don't have any issues with COVID, so they're, they, they're, they're safe. Which is why Steve says when the Caverns and Adventure Park does open, this big troll will be right here greeting people with a giant smile. He'll be here waiting to, to greet him, and hopefully we'll be greeting him here in the next week or so. There is also a troll in Breckenridge. Both were built by different artists, and there are a few differences. There is a possibility other trolls might start showing up in the future at the caverns, so watch out for that. We'll be right back. Before we go, we wanted to thank all of you. The next team started a new weekly challenge of giving called Word of Thanks. This week, we asked you to do donate $5 to help Civic Center Conservancy's efforts to clean up Civic Center Park. You blew away that challenge by donating a total of $90,000. All of that will go a long way for the park. The next team's looking for the next small or mid-sized nonprofit to feature on Wednesday. Send suggestions with the hashtag HeyNexter to next at 9news.com. Thanks for watching. We're back at 9 and 10.